السلام علیکم رحمۃ اللہ چلو بیٹھ جاؤ کتنے لڑکے آئے ہوئے ہیں اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان اللہ و ملہ تسلیم دنیا آخری سال ہے سبات آخری سال ہے اطفال الحمدیا میں پندرہ سال کا ابھی چودہ سال کا ہوں تو ابھی چودہ سال کے مجھے لگتا ہے سیکنڈ لاس جی مجھے لگتا ہے ایک سال کام عمر ہے اچھا بیٹھ جاؤ بیٹھ جاؤ اچھا بلال کسی بونسو ٹرانسلیشن السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ وعلیکم السلام ورحمۃ اللہ I seek refuge with Allah from Satan for accursed in the name of Allah the gracious, ever merciful. The verses just recited are from Surah Al-Ahzab, Holy Quran, chapter 33, verses 57 to 58. Allah and his angels send blessings on the Prophet. O ye who believe, you also should invoke blessings on him and salute him with the salutation of peace. Verily, those who malign Allah and his messenger, Allah has cursed them in this world and in the hereafter, and has prepared for them an abasing punishment. Jazakallah. Mm. Okay. Uh, Ashir Ahmed Khan Hadith. السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اللہ مسلی علی محمد و علی علی محمد کما صلی علی ابراہیم و علی علی ابراہیم ان کا حمید مجید اللہ مبارک علی محمد و علی علی محمد کما بارکتا علی ابراہیم و علی علی ابراہیم 
ان نہ کا حمید مجید حدیث قال رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم من صلی اللہ علیہ صلاۃ واحد صلی اللہ علیہ اشر صلوات وحت انہ اشو خطی آت و رفیت لہ اشو دراجات جزاک اللہ جزاک اللہ ہاں جی فاد مرزا ترجمہ السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وعلیکم السلام The translation of the hadith just recited is as follows The Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said Whoever invokes blessings upon me once Allah will send blessings upon him tenfold and will erase 10 sins from him and will raise him 10 degrees in status Sunan An-Nasa'i chapter the virtue of sending the road upon the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam jazakallah jazakallah yusuf sayyid amdi qasida assalamu alaikum warahmatullah <coughs> ya rabbi salli ala nabi kada iman fi hadhihi ومداركي وجناني من ذكر وجهك يا حديقة بهجتي لم أخل في لحد ولا في آني جسمي يطوير إليك من شوق على يا ليت كانت قوة طيراني يا رب صل على نبيك دائما في هذه الدنيا وبعث ثاني في هذه الدنيا وبعث ثاني جزاك الله مزاك الله نصير الدين صاحب ترجمة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The translation of the Qasida just recited O oh my Lord, always shower blessings on your Prophet in this world and the next O oh my Beloved My adoration for you has penetrated into my blood into my blood heart soul and body O oh, you my garden of delight you live in my memory all the time I see your face every moment of my life my body yearns to fly towards you out of love would that I had the power to fly ہاں جی اور کیا کہتے ہیں فراد صاحب یہ نصیر الدین احمدی ایک نصیر احمدی ہے ایک سعید احمدی ہے باقی کیا غیر احمدی ہیں کس کے بیٹے ہیں یہ دونوں احمدی نصیر الدین احمدی یور فادر کون ہے ابا ابا کون ہے فادر مائی فادر از عمران الدین احمدی اچھا عمران الدین احمدی اور سعید احمدی کا ابے کا ابا کون ہے وقار احمد احمدی وقار احمدی تو تم لوگ چچا دا دو بھائی ہو تمہارے ابا دونوں تمہارے ابا اور اس کے ابا بھائی ہیں یور فادر برادرس 
Nej, mig og mig og Nasiris og mig og sisters. Acha, acha, acha. Så du lov Nasim Bajwa sa hvilken der var sejo? Er du grandson af Nasim Bajwa? Nasim Ahmed Bajwa is our grandfather. Yes, that is what I am asking. Tika Bajwa. Nisaka. Acha, ab kya kette ho? हजूर कुछ सवालात हैं अगर हजूर इजाज़ दें तो एक-एक करके आ सकते हैं हाँ एक-एक करके आओगे ज़ाहिर है कठिया आओगे तो मैं समझ नहीं सकूँगा अस्सलाम वालेकुम वरहमतुल्लाहि वबरकातु वालेकुम सलाम वरहमतुल्लाहि वबरकातु डेरेस्ट हजूर माय नेम इस फ़ाहान ज़मील आई एम फ्रॉम द ईस्ट मिडलैंड्स रीज़न what advice will you give to the new Ahmadis around the world? Acha, your family is a new convert, huh? Yeah. Right? When did you come to this country? Your family, when did they come to this country? You were born here in this country? No, I was born in Pakistan. When did you come here? In 2011. 2011. When you are seven years old. Six years old. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Achha, mashallah. So, all of your family members are now Ahmadis. Your father, mother, siblings. Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, they are. You are the eldest one of your parents or the youngest? Uh, middle child. Achha. How many siblings do you have? Uh, four. Achha, mashallah. So you, your, your number is third? Yeah. Huh? Achha, mashallah. So what advice would you give to all new Ahmadis around the world? See? You, you converted to Ahmadiyya, Ahmadiyya Muslim sect from other, some other Muslim sects, huh? From Sunni background? Yeah. Right? Yes. You already know what are the five pillars of faith and what are the 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 pillars of uh, your uh, uh, Islam and Iman, eh? right? You already know it. You already know that uh, the, the Holy Quran is the holy book revealed uh, to the Holy Prophet right and this is the final law bearing book you already know that the holy prophet sallallahu is the the khatmun nabiyin that the 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 seal of the prophets right he is the final prophet law bearing prophet right no other prophet can come after him that is all you know right yes so the only difference between an Ahmadi and, an, and a non-Ahmadi Muslim is that you believe that the, the Messiah of the age who was to come and whose advent was foretold and prophesied by the Holy Prophet Wasallam has come and you have accepted him. Right? So, after having accepted why did you accept it? Because you already believe in the same prophet, in the same holy book, in the same religion. So why did you believe in the Prophet Muhammad? Why did you do bad? Because you knew that the prophecy of the Holy Prophet about the advent of Prophet Muhammad has been fulfilled and you are obeying the commandment of the Holy Prophet ﷺ that whenever my Mahdi appears, you accept him. Right? Okay. Since you accept Ahmadiyya, there should be some significant change in your lifestyle. In, in, uh, in your life with regards to your religious matters. 
people should know that now, after having accepted Ahmadiyyat, you are a changed person. You offer five daily prayers, if possible, in congregation. If not, at least at home, you can offer five daily prayers in congregation. Read the Holy Quran daily and try to find out the commandments and injunctions given in the Holy Quran and try to practice those. Those things which Allah Ta'ala has asked us to do, we shall try to do them. And those things which Allah Ta'ala has asked us to stop doing or they are prohibited, you do not do it, right? So, the, a true Ahmadi, whether he is a new convert or an old Ahmadi, this should be the basic thing that there should be a significant change which people should feel in him. And that is to follow the true teaching of Islam and be a practicing Muslim. Offer five daily prayers, do talawat, and try to learn more about religion. And in this age, the literature given to us by the Prophet Muhammad is the best literature through which we can comprehend much better religious knowledge, right? So we should try to reach these, these books because the literature of the Muslim Islam covers all the necessary teachings of Islam given in the Holy Quran and in the Hadith. So we should try to read the books of Prophet Islam and try to understand the true religion and be a practicing Muslim. This is the only thing. Otherwise, you already know so many things which you believed in. A person who comes from other religious background, from Christianity or Judaism or Buddhist, Buddhism or Hinduism, he has some problems to understand the religion. But being an old Muslim family, there should not be any problem for a Muslim family to start practicing immediately what the true teachings are. And that is what the Prophet Muhammad has taught us and has brought us. And it actually he came to revive the true teaching of Islam. Right? So we should try to be a practicing Muslim. Okay? Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, Piyare Hazur. My name is Zain Chowdhury. My name is Zain Chowdhury. I am 15 years old. Zain Ahmed? Zain Ahmed? Your name is Zain Ahmed? Anji. Acha. You say Zain, Zain Chowdhury. It is Zain. It is Zain Chowdhury, not Zain. So you pronounce your name as, as this uh, British people pronounce your name, huh? Okay. I'm from Birmingham Central Jamaat in West Midlands. My question is, my grandparents are non ahmadi How can I make them interested in Ahmadiyyat? When did your family accept Ahmadiyyat? Uh, my dad's side were already Ahmadi, but my, from my mom's side, they weren't. My mom Achha, your, your, uh, your, your maternal family. Your maternal grandparents are not Ahmadi, but paternal, from father's side, they are Ahmadi. Right? Yes. You see, if uh, they are Muslims, Hanji. if they are Muslims, then if they see there's a significant change in your lifestyle, as I have already mentioned, that you are a practicing Muslim, and they see their, their grandchild is offering five daily prayer, they see that they, their grandchild is reading the Holy Quran daily. They, they see that their grandchild is morally better than the other grandchildren who are not Ahmadis. So, definitely, they will try to think that what is special 
in Ahmadiyyad. Why Ahmadiyyad has made some change in it? So, the true way is, the right way is, that try to be a practicing Ahmadi Muslim. In this way, you can attract others also towards Ahmadiyyad. Okay? This is the only way. So, there should be some significant change in your practice, practice with regards to Islamic teachings and your morals. If you are better than your other cousins and other um, uh, family members who are not Ahmadis, then obviously they will try to get attracted towards Ahmadiyyat. Right? Yes. Not only even your grandparents, but your other family members as well. Okay? Okay? Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Allah Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu piyari azur. Wa alaikum salam. Haanji, Nabeel Ahmed Hamid. My name... Your name is Nabeel Ahmed Hamid. Yeah. Um, I'm 14 years old from Birmingham South Jamaat in West Midlands. Uh, my question is that inshallah, after the coronavirus restrictions have lifted in the UK, will you carry on doing virtual mulakats along with the physical mulakats? You see, if uh, possible, it can be continued. You see, those uh, jam Jamaat members who are living in far off countries where I do not visit frequently, obviously they might have virtual mulakat with me. But people like you who are just living here and 100, 100 miles from London, they can easily come to see me. Would you like or you, would you prefer to have a, 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 a virtual mulakat or just a physical mulakat? Physical mulakat is well. Okay. <laughs> for, for you it is physical and for those countries whose uh, people cannot come to the UK easily with them, it is quite possible we shall have virtual mulakat. Now, we shall have opened a new avenue. New doors are open now of this mulakat. So it can be utilized later on. Hanji. Right? Okay? Okay. Hanji. <laughs> Hanji. <laughs> Allah Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Pari Hazur, my name is Adil Ahmed Faruqi and I am 13 years old. I'm from Birmingham East Jamaat. My question is, what should the daily routine for a tifl be? What should the daily routine of a tifl be? You see, an Ahmadi Muslim, whether he's a tifl or khadim or any person, huh? when you attain the mature age, that is after 10, your, the tifl age starts from 7 to 10. So a tifl of the age of 7 to 10 should try to regulate his life by offering daily prayers, right? Sometime he may offer three, four, five prayers, but when you attain the age of 10, hmm? when you are 10 years of age, then it is obligatory on you to offer five daily prayers, right? So the routine should be that you get up early in the morning, offer your Fajr prayer and uh, do Tilawat of the Holy Quran even if it is uh, one Raku or two Rakus then if there is a time enough time to get a short nap then you can go to the bed again and have a nap 
for half an hour or if you have enough time you can even sleep for two hours during during uh, summers then get up get yourself prepared for school go to school spend your day in the school there you should also behave well with your fellow students when you come back from school do your uh, homework and also try to do some extra work which you are supposed to uh, read in the next day eh? so so if you read the thing you are going to read on the next day that will also help to get you better uh, understand the, the the lecture of your teacher or whatever you are going to study then no before that you will have to offer your zohar prayer and if there is no time to offer between the closing of the school and reaching back to back home then you should ask your teacher or head teacher to give you some place to offer your zohar prayer there and if the time is too short then you can offer zohar and asr prayer together join those prayers together right and if there is enough time then come back home offer your zohar prayer or if there is not enough time offer your zohar and asr prayer at home right then when it is maghrib time play f- uh, then after that you should play for some time outside for one hour if there is time to play for one hour then during summers you can easily play right for one hour you play football or cricket or hockey or rugby or anything you like hmm ha huh? then offer your maghrib prayer then also study try to st- read some books either religious books or other story books so increase your knowledge and also try to read newspaper to increase your uh, secular knowledge then offer isha prayer after having had your dinner offer your isha prayer and then go to bed as early as possible so that you can wake up instead of wasting time on television or internet or ipad seeing watching so many nonsense things ha eh? so you better go to bed early ha eh? and so you will be able to get up early morning for fajr prayer so this is said that early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy wealthy and wise ha eh? right <laughs> this should be your routine ایلڈرلی پیپل ان آر ڈیلی لائف how can we care for elderly people in our daily life you see we should look after them those who are your uh, immediate relatives your grandparents even your uncles your father's uncles your mother's uncles or their elder brother and sisters you should if they need your help you should help them and uh, if you have a chance to help and serve those elderly people if some elder person your grandparents any of your grandparents or both of them are living with you you should try to help them serve them sit with them and listen to them because at the age this age because your parents are very busy your mother will be busy at home doing your uh, household work and your father will be busy outside and they will come back home they are tired or even after doing 
the the house work your mother also will be tired so you can after coming from school after doing your homework and all these things you should give some time to your parents listen to them speak to them so in this way you can emotionally help them and they will be happy they will pray they will pray for you so you need the prayers of your your parents and grandparents so in this way you will also get the prayers and that will also help you to get success in your life right yes okay so okay yes. assalamu alaikum jazakum allah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh my beloved zuhra wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh how are you how are you? <laughs> i am mikhail i am fine mashallah alhamdulillah am i not looking fine huh better than you i think better than you yes <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> all right ha uh, malik sahab now what is your question my question is what is the criteria making dua to allah you see criteria is always seek allah has allah's help and beseech his uh, help and do dua for good things yeah you see so if you are asking for good things and uh, seeking good results of those good things and allah taala give you those good things then these those prayers will be accepted but if your dua is that oh allah taala kill that person and take revenge from <laughs> that boy who has who has cheated me or did wrong to me eh? so these are, prayers are not accepted eh? so the criteria is that you always seek allah's help in everything good then allah taala will help you and that is the criteria and before that you should do istighfar also so that allah taala save you also from the bad things right and also do durood durood sharif see when you recite durood sharif then the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that your prayers will be accepted ha eh? if you don't do, do not recite the rule sharif and just ask uh, uh, do dua allah taala will not accept it as i have told you earlier in some other meeting that the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that those duas will remain suspended in the air they will not reach to the heaven ha eh? so it will not Hazur. that means that means they it will they will not be accepted so the basic thing is that do istighfar offer durood sharif and then seek allah's help and ask him whatever you like good not bad hazur can i tell you something please it's not to be read then okay i will i will no. listen to you later on and uh, the thing is that you should also be a practicing muslim offer five daily prayers not that when you are in need of something then you start offering pr- prayers and seek allah's help no whether you need something or not whether you are happy or not even if you are in your happy life and you do not you don't have any worries even then you should offer daily prayers and seek allah's help ha eh? and do istighfar and do durood then allah taala will accept your prayers when you are in need of those uh, things for the acceptance of those prayers right okay now tell me what do you want to say um hazur basically i've been making a dua for four months now and i was quite to allah and everything for it and it doesn't seem like it's been accepted yet how how can i like not lose hope and never give up and know that this dua will be accepted accepted in the coming months <laughs> you see you have been doing some dua for last four months and it has not been accepted huh No, not yet, not yet. I know Allah accepts, inshallah. Allah Taala knows better. He He has the knowledge of everything. He knows whether whether the thing the thing you are asking for is good for you or not. 
If Allah Ta'ala feels that yes. it is not good for you, he will not accept it. If you are offering five daily prayers and you are a true Muslim and practicing Muslim and have a fear of Allah Ta'ala yeah, and do istighfar and do durud sharif, then even then if Allah Ta'ala is not accepting it, that means whether he tells you or not. But that means that that prayer you are doing or the thing you are asking for is not good for you. So, if you are not practicing Muslim, you are not offering five daily prayers even in your normal life and not doing istighfar, not doing Duru Sharif, offering Duru Sharif, then start doing it. And then again, do the same prayer. Then see whether it is accepted or not. Even if it is not accepted, even then, then just relax and think that it's the will of Allah that he is not going to accept that prayer. So, then ask Allah Ta'ala that which, which, whatever is good for me, give me that, that thing in place of this. Right? Okay? Okay. You must have a firm belief that Allah Ta'ala will give you the good thing, not the bad thing. Yeah? Sometimes your prayers are not good for you. This is why they are not listened by Allah Ta'ala. Okay? In, uh, in, instead, Allah Ta'ala gives you, accept those prayers in some other way. Okay? Same thing, but and, in different and, ways. And, and, and you will get benefits in some other things instead of getting that thing. Right? If you, if you feel comfortable, you can write to me, then what was your prayer? Oh, dear Hazur, I write to you like all the time about it, like non-stop. <laughs> yeah? So you can write to me what was that prayer, then I will let you know that I will tell you. Okay? All right? Sorry for taking a long time. All right. All right. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum, beloved Hazur. Wa alaikum My name is Daniel Ahmed. I am 14 years old and I am from Birmingham, Upper West Jamaat. Beloved Hazur, my question is how can I be more self confident? How can you be self confident? You look very, very, very well confident person. Are you not confident? No, not that much. Huh? No, so, not much. Are, are you not good in school? Your studies? Are you good? I'm pretty good. Pretty good. What is your position in the, your class? Second, third, fourth, fifth? Uh, how, how, many student, third. how many students are studying in your class? 30? 30. And you are. Uh, the fourth or fifth among them who is good in studies? Yeah, properly. Then, then the, it should be enough for you to get confidence. Huh? So you are doing well. Why you are worried? Right? And then also offer five daily prayers and seek Allah Ta'ala's help. That Allah Ta'ala give you more confidence and give you, make you a good asset for the Jamaat and for the humanity, right? And so be determined that you will have to gain these things and fix some targets and then try to work hard to gain those targets, to achieve those targets, right? Okay. So, okay. And uh, if you think that you you feel shy to speak before other people, and if that is that is your question, then stand in front of a mirror and then speak loudly, make a speech there, eh? while seeing okay. your while seeing your face eh? in front of a mirror, then speak loudly. Then you will gain confidence. When you're talking to the people, don't think. They are better than you. Always think that you are better than everybody. But it should not create arrogance in you. Eh? Right? So there are so many things. Okay? Okay.
Okay. So, always talk to the people. If it's an elderly person, is your 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 parents or other people? Okay, you can just uh, lower your eyes while talking to them. But when you are talking to your fellow students, just talk to them eye to eye. Eh? Open your eyes and see their faces always, eh? as you are seeing me now. Okay? Good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, beloved Hazu. Wa alaikum salam. Are you, are you from Ghana? Um, I was born in the UK, but my parents come from Ghana. Achha, the Bonsu Sahib, the Ibrahim Bonsu is your... Are you related to Ibrahim Bonsu Sahib or not? Um, he's my father. He's your father? Uh, yes. No, Ibrahim, oh. Ibrahim, Ibrahim Junior or Ibrahim Senior? Um, his father is Ibrahim Bonsu also. Uh, yes, this is what I am saying, senior and junior, because father and the son both have the same name. <laughs> Achha. So you are the grandson of Ibrahim Bonsu Sahib, whom I am referring to. Achha. Yes. That was, what is your question? My question is, it's not compulsory for me to fast during the month of Ramadan, but is there any advice that beloved Hazul can give me so I can also get more blessings during the month of Ramadan? It is not an obligatory on you to do fasting. How old are you? Fifteen. Fifteen. So you can, if you can tolerate, you have the, you see, your health is good, then at the age of fifteen, after, on every alternate day, you can do fast. Eh? You can keep fast. Yes. Right? So in this way, you can, you can have uh, 15 or 16 roza fasting. Eh? Right? But apart from that, fasting during the month of Ramadan, you should also be more careful towards your prayers. Offer your prayers fervently. And, and uh, not only five daily prayers, but also do some extra prayers, Nawafal, Tahajjad, right? If you offer Nawafal and Tahajjad, you will get the same blessing. And then try to read the Holy Quran and try to finish the Holy Quran at least once during the month of Ramadan, the whole of the Holy Quran. Then you will also get the blessing of Ramadan. So when you are at the age of 18, then you should keep all the rozas and keep fast for 29 or 30 days of Ramadan. So when you attain the age of 18, then you will be entitled. Although if your health is good, you can now even you can keep fast during the whole of Ramadan, but if you feel that you are not that healthy, then at the age of 18, then you should try to keep all the rosas and uh, during Ramadan. Okay? Okay. Yes. Som. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah huzu. Assalamu alaikum, Piyare Azur. My name is Tukir Shirwani. I am 13 years old from Peterborough, Jamaat. My question is, how much time do you spend on your Friday sermon speeches? It depends on the topics. Huh? Sometimes it takes me 20 hours, 30 hours, 4 days, 5 days. Sometimes it takes me 2-3 hours. So it all depends on the topics, right? When I have to find the references, then it will take me some time. 
and I have to write with my own hands the whole of the script, then it takes time. Huh? So, so it all depends. So you can say from three hours to four days or 40 hours. Right? Okay. Okay, thank you. Jazakla. Jazakla. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My beloved Hazur. Ya alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Ya Yeah. Oh, sure. I am 14 years old. I am from the West Midlands. Where are you from? Wolverhampton. No, no, I mean your parents. Oh, um, they're from here as well. Huh? They're from here as well. You were born here UK. in the UK? Yeah. Yeah. So your, your parents are immigrants to this country? Sorry? Your parents are immigrants of this country or they were also born yeah. here? Where did they come from? They were born here. Um, they're from here. Where, where, where your parents are originally from? Um, my stepdad's from um, Germany. Okay. Then what do you, what is your question? Um, my question is, what happened to the Pharaoh's body after Allah the Almighty drowned him in the sea? That for Pharaoh who was drowned in the sea, his body was saved as promised by Allah Ta'ala and it is mentioned in the Holy Quran, right? Though he was uh, in coma, Throughout that period, he lived his life, and uh, but he could, he was not very active. But he was not he did not die immediately. His body was saved, and he was in coma, and after some time he died, and after that, as it was the normal practice of uh, in Egypt, the bodies uh, used to be mummified. His uh, body as a king was also mummified. And uh, now it is said that uh, in the uh, Egyptian museum, this, his body is saved there as a mummy. You can see it, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Stakula. Mm. Or what else? Assalamu alaikum, Piyala Hazur. My name is Nasiruddin. I'm 13 years old and I'm from Leicester in the East Midlands region. Hazur, I'm currently trying to learn Urdu and I'm finding it quite difficult. Um, is there any advice you can give me for learning a new language or skill? I tell you, I always give you advice. You try to learn Urdu from your grandfather. <laughs> this is the advice. Yeah. You see, you try to read a small children book. Huh? If you want to do reading, so you try to learn Urdu by reading the small books. Huh? So, if you start reading those books, then you will you understand to know how to make the sentences, how to join the words. Eh? So, this way you will learn. And then speak Urdu with your mother. Your mother, knows, I think, is well versed with Urdu, not your father. Eh? So, so, speak Urdu with your mother and ask her that uh, she should not speak with you in English. And then also talk to your grandfather at least half an hour daily, either on Skype or uh, on WhatsApp, eh? Facebook, something, eh? so that you can see how he's speaking. <laughs> you can see his lip reading. Uh, you can see his uh, lip movement. Eh? Or uh, this is how you will also try to find out how to 
to to speak the words and how to spell the words and uh, see these are this is the way so practice makes a man perfect you will have to do practice okay inshallah ji jazakallah khair now time is over ha huh? farad sahab time is over now how many questions left Uh, eight. So we could only answer twelve questions. Huh? Okay. Okay. Next time they can write it to me with their addresses, so I will reply them. Okay. Jizur Zakla. Zakla. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Zakla wa alaikum. Allah Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Allah Hafiz.